Amen. Um, <laughs> I need a bit of help here, please. <laughs> okay, um, can we all just take this time just to welcome and appreciate the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. Amen. Um, Lord, you are good. Father, you are mighty, oh God. Into your presence we come, not by the works we have done, but by the grace and the grace alone. Spirit of God, we welcome you into this place, oh God, in this moment. Lord, we welcome you into this place. Come, Holy Spirit, come and keep company with us, oh God. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, we call on you this evening. We ask that, Lord, you may come. Father, we welcome you into this place, oh God. We welcome you, mighty God. Father, we have come just as we are, Lord, withholding nothing, oh God. We have come, Lord, uh, naked before you. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Father, we've come, oh God, to just sit at your feet, oh God. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, would you prepare our hearts, oh God, for your word. Lord, we pray because you are God and Lord where two or three are gathered in your name there you are Lord in our midst father we welcome you into this place this evening spirit of the living God we ask that you come welcome Holy Spirit you welcome in this place you welcome in this place you're welcome in our midst you're welcome Holy Spirit we welcome you into this place we welcome you into this place we welcome you into this place we acknowledge acknowledge your presence into this place. We acknowledge your presence into this place. We welcome you, Lord. Father, we open our hearts, oh God, that you may minister to us as you see fit. Lord, we allow you to be God in this place. We allow you to rule and reign. We allow you to take charge, mighty God. Father, we step aside, oh God. Let your will be done, oh God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus you are the true living God you are the Lord who sees us you are the Lord who hears us father we pray in the name of Jesus we allow you to be God we allow you to move in this place as you see fit my God you're faithful my God you're mighty Lord we call on you Yahweh father we have come that you may speak to us father we have come Come, oh God, that you may speak over our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, we have come because we need a word from you. Father, we need something that will sustain us for this week. Lord, we allow you to be God in this place. We silence any other voice that is not the voice of God. We silence any other thing that may try to distract us. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus this evening. God, we call on you you Yahweh we call on you mighty God we call on you Holy Spirit father we dedicate this service into your hands oh God we allow you to be God in this meeting we allow you to move oh God father we have come to just sit at your feet Lord we have come to just hear from you father you're faithful you're mighty oh God Lord we have our hearts yielded to you oh God whatever need that is represented in this place we know that God you can meet every need father to everyone that is sick we know that you are a healer we know you to be a God who heals we know you to be a God who provides father we pray in the name of Jesus spirit of God we allow you to move in this place we allow you to be God over everything may the
men. And I know Murusi always says that we must never engage in battles that we have never won. Amen. We cannot enter this week unless we have conquered it spiritually. Amen. So I want us to just stand and declare this evening. One thing that I've seen with my own life as well is that if the issues of this life come and find you without a word, you will not make it. Amen. So let us pray that our hearts will be able to receive the word that God has for us this evening. I know for most of us, we came for entertainment, but I want to, to challenge us to just push beyond that because that feeling will only last for a moment but we need something that will sustain us for the rest of the week amen and I believe that God can speak to whatever situation that you have if it's a need that you have God can meet that if you're in the morning season God can be your comforter amen so let us just pray that God may we receive your word with gladness May we not just be excited and be entertained, but may we have something that will sustain us for the week ahead. Amen. Let us pray. Father, your God, your mighty, oh God. Father, your word says, Lord, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Father, we have come, mighty God, that you may give us a word for this week, oh God. Lord, we are not afraid of anything, oh God, because we know that, Lord, you have equipped us. We know that, Lord, we, we have come that you may empower us. We pray in the name of Jesus this evening. Mighty Lord, you are faithful. Mighty Lord, you are good. Lord, would you empower us, oh God, for the week ahead. Come and stay with us, oh Lord. Father, would you hold our hand, oh God, for this week ahead. Lord, we declare that we have conquered, oh God. Father, we are not in defeat, oh God. Father, we are victorious, oh God. We speak, oh God, your blessing. We speak, oh God, your power over everything, oh God, in our lives. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, we can stand and face opposition, oh God, because we know the one who begs us. We know the one who covers us. We know the one that holds us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word, oh God. You are mighty King of glory. Oh Lord, you are faithful. Father, we have come, oh God. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this moment in your presence, oh God. We thank you that, God, we have come, oh God, for the bread of life. We thank you that, Lord, each and every one of us will live with something, oh God, that will change our lives, oh God, for good. Father, more than anything, we need the presence of the Holy Spirit in everything that we do. Father, we thank you for this moment, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for this time in your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah! Come on and say hallelujah! We greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. So, Bangwele, we have one rule in this house. One rule. We don't have a lot of rules. Just one. And the, the rule is, thou shalt have fun. Who is ready to have fun in this place? So, of course, we have one of the finest worshippers of our time. Um, I, I would send Minister Takindo to the Worship Olympics. Lord, oh Lord, what the real... Burut, you're a fave, and I'm not buying face. I even told them during the second service. And we are there for the recording as well. We, we are there. Um, I think also... Maybe before we start, if you can just tell us a bit about the recording. Uh, are there still tickets available? Yeah, please just, before we start, uh, let us maybe just tell us a bit. But we are excited, ladies and gentlemen, to have in our midst, Minister Takido! Amen, amen, amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. We give glory to the King of Kings. Him alone is worthy 
of our praise. Him alone is worthy of our worship. And Him alone is worthy of all glory, honor, and power. Hallelujah. So, um, like Umfundisi said, the glory life recording. <laughs> uh, that's what it's all about, the glory. So the glory life, re life recording is happening on the 20th of April, 2024. At Carnival City, Big Top Arena. Uh, tickets are already available. Compu ticket, ShopRite checkers. You can buy your ticket online. I think you guys are like online people. You, you probably don't have to go to, to shop right uh, there by money market. <laughs> but if you have to, please do go and get your ticket. They are still available only from 299 rands. So, so hey, I'm, 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 I'm really scared because that place takes 5,300 people. Carnival City takes 5,300 people. And I definitely don't have those people. But I believe that God has the people that will come and fill up that place. So I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God that if you guys come and you are part of that, we will be able to fill it up for the glory of God. Hallelujah. And, and, and when the Holy Spirit dropped the theme of the glory, uh, uh, I asked, uh, are we giving God the glory on the night? And the answer was very, very clear, no. It's, it's, we are not going there to give God the glory. But we are going there because God is going to fill us with his glory. We need the glory of God. And that's what this album is going to be about. So I've written about, about, about 21 songs. <laughs> and then I, I wanted to do I wanted to do a bit of hymns, but I think it's not my calling, so I took them out and I was left with like one hymn and just two public domains. So we're gonna do about 24 songs. Yeah. So please make sure you come. I'm I'm still working with the very, very same band that you know. So if 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 it's not broken, why fix it? So those are the guys that I've been working with for the past, since 2009. So for the past, what, 15, 14, 15 years, they, those are the guys I've been working with. And if they are still available to serve, I'm going to be working with them. So I cannot wait to see you guys. But these guys have been doing some incredible stuff. I wish, uh, I don't know, I, are you recording Mfundis anytime soon? I, are you guys not recording anytime soon? Please, when you record, please feature me. Please, please feature me. Please feature me when you record. We, you can do, you see that, that Imvula song? Yeah, you can do it. And feature me for like two minutes. Ne? But, uh, so let's get it on. The first song that we're going to do, it says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to the Father except through him. Yes.
thank you for the life you've given us. For waking me up in the morning. For having a roof above my head. For having food on my table. We just want to say thank you. Thank you. Practical tonight. His name. Do not leave this place without your miracle. Don't leave this place without a solution to your situation. He can do anything. Every voice singing. He will provide. His name is Jehovah. Let's declare. He can do anything. He can do anything. He will provide. I receive it tonight. My provide. I want you to make it personal. Sing for yourself. He can do.
We are grateful for your grace. Miranda. If you are grateful, I want you to sing it for 30 more seconds. Sobo Wawena. for the last time knowing that he makes you sleep in peace same spirit just continue to worship him in this place come on come on let's raise the standard of worship in this place come on he's worthy he's worthy of worship hallelujah Come on, build an altar of praise. Build an altar of praise. Build an altar of worship in this place. 
Come on, come on, come on, build an altar of praise in this place. Build an altar of worship. Let's make a seat for him to sit on. Come on, let it be a worship. Let it be a worship. Let it be a worship. Sing it one more time. We lay our crowns.
can we give Jesus a shout of praise in this place? Come on, you can do better than that. Can you give him a shout of praise? He alone is worthy. He alone is worthy. Right now, I'm going to need us to do a Jericho shout. We're not going to wait for the walls to come down for us to give him praise. So I'm going to count up to three. We're going to praise God on credit for what he's about to do. For the walls that are about to come down. At the count of three, we're going to shout the name Jesus. One. Two. Two point seven. <laughs> Savior Jesus Christ, amen. Can you just uh, greet someone as you make your way down to your seat? Praise the Lord. <laughs> I think we can have the pulpit on stage, right? Praise the Lord. What a blessing. Bangwele, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Who's excited to be in the house of Shikwembu? Yeah. I've got it on good authority that he loves it when we call him that. Amen. Amen. There are some prayers. You can't say daddy. You need to say Shikwembu. Like, you mean war. You mean war. Praise the Lord. What a great blessing. Thank you so much. Um, just want to honor. We are so blessed today. Um, uh, Minister Takindo, can we just honor this servant of the Lord? No, Muruti is dangerous. He's a dangerous worshiper, and we just love him. And we can't wait for the glory. Amen. What a great blessing. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to come and worship with us and to lead worship. We don't take it lightly, sir. It's such a great blessing. And uh, we are also blessed uh, to have uh, Pastor Colin Malulek. Muruti, can you stand up, sir? Let's give it up for Pastor Colin! Yeah! <laughs> he is the pastor of Goshen City Church, uh, one of the fastest growing, excellent churches you'll ever come across. And you know, when things like that happen, you just know that there's great leadership behind. Amen. So men of God, we really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, and we really, really, really appreciate it. Praise the Lord. It's good to have uh, Dr. Malula and his lovely wife in the house. Can we just give them a round of applause as well? Praise the Lord. Aus Ipi preached a dangerous word this morning. Yeah, no, no, no. It's like she put her aside this whole CEO thing. She's like, we're taking it to the streets. Amen. We're not from four ways. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aus Ipi, for that. That was so absolutely, absolutely powerful. Uh, we're just going to quickly go, um, going to take up our offering. Praise the Lord. Um, maybe even just start off with, let me just start by welcoming our first-time visitors. Do we have any firsties? If you're here for the first time, please raise your hand. Whoa. Wow. Can you guys please stand up? We want to love and appreciate on you. Please stand up. Please 
please remain standing. Please remain standing. Thank you so much for coming to Eternal Glory Church. And as we like to say in this house, your search for a church has come to end. Very abrupt. I know you've been praying about a church. Let's pray, you know, for other things. We have a lot of problems in this world. The church issue, just take it off. God has been good already in 2024. Amen. Yeah, so if you've got an iPhone with you, praise the Lord. <laughs> iOS things, praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm kidding. All phones work. You can just scan the QR code and we'll just take to a place. We'll just find out a bit about you, who you are, Tumengani, you know, all that type of jazz. Zazi, say, yeah, yeah. And of course, if you say, these are my people, I'm about you guys. I want to roll with you guys. There's what we call the EGC portal. One of the most minimalistic groups you'll ever come across. I don't say anything about Kaiser Chiefs, Manchester United. We just keep it clean, Manuel. We talk about things that build up our immune system. Amen. So we don't talk football there. Praise the Lord. So this is for those who are saying we want to join and be part of this great community. Uh, please just scan that. Uh, EGC, can we welcome our best visitors ever? You guys are the best ones yet. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Just a reminder that this week we are no longer fasting, ladies and gentlemen. We are giving the Lord some rest. Amen. And I'm kidding. We are giving ourselves some rest. So we're moving it um, into the week after this one. We're going to start on Wednesday. And of course, as our custom, we'll finish on a Friday with half night prayer. And a reminder as well that this coming Sunday, we are having a business Sunday. Somebody say business Sunday. And the whole idea around that, we are raising that six million. Praise the Lord. Um, this past week, we hit a very, very beautiful breakthrough. Um, we should know by Tuesday how far we are with this thing. But God, has, God is touching some people. Amen. Say, say some people is me. <laughs> but guys, six million is nothing, you know. Six million is here. So what's six million? I mean, you know. Uh, so next week, just come with your best seed. Uh, for those who have uh, pledged those specific amounts, please make sure that you satisfy them this week. It's going to be an amazing time in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And then, of course, somebody say six. Six. So... EGC is turning six years old next week, Sunday. Can we thank God for that? So as you guys know, we have a strong turn-up culture in this house. Amen. Next week, we're going to be celebrating. Uh, just come with your towel. Actually, in the second service, we spoke about that Zulu towel. You know the colorful one? Amen. The one that they put around their shoulder. Get that one for next week. It's going down. Praise the Lord. Um, let me just quickly take uh, tithes and offering, and then we will uh, go straight into uh, the Word of God and introduce our speaker. Uh, you guys have had too many sermons, so just so that you know we quote scriptures in this house, I'll quote. <laughs> Pastor Easy, well, I quote the scriptures a lot. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Luke chapter 6, verse 38, the Bible says, given shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give unto our bosom. But here's a thought, right? In this church, we don't believe that you can start offering without tithing first. So it's tithe and what? Come on, the order is important. It's what? So as we say, tithe is not the ceiling of our giving. It's the floor of our giving. So we start with our tithe. And then once we are done with our 10%, and remember, we are quite specific. We don't like being vague. We don't like being vague. Like the young lawyer who was asked, what are we? <laughs> and he said, we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And he was not lying. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. But I guess that's not what the daughter of Zion was asking. So we are not vague. We are not ambiguous around what we mean when we talk about tithe. We mean gross tithe. What are gross people, Amen. The Bible says, give unto God what is God's, or render one to God what is God's to God, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. So we, we, we don't believe that we can give to Caesar before we give to God. Can I say that again? 
We don't believe we can give to Caesar before we give to God. Giving to Caesar is giving to the revenue service. We also don't believe that we give to discovery or whatever medical aid scheme that you are part of before we give to God. So before any deduction, God must eat first. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. When do we seek him? Come on, come on, people, come on. When do we seek him? First, seek first, not only but first, right? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So this is how we give in this house. We've got, uh, the one I like is the EFT, praise the Lord. This tapping, swiping, it reflects on Wednesday, amen. <laughs> Our problems are immediate. <laughs> Immediate problems need immediate payments. <laughs> and no, we don't have a capital account. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So that's the one, Bangwele. Let's make it one of the greatest forms of kindness you can ever show is immediate payment. Hey, it will reflect on my Hajj. Let it reflect now. Praise the Lord. So please give to us that so we can EFT and of course, if really. There's nothing we can do. You can type or swipe. And for those who would like to tithe, use an envelope, you can also raise your hand. Praise the Lord. And of course, there'll be a circulation of baskets. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given your children seed to sow. Uh, may they not mistaken it, oh God, for bread to eat. We just bind the spirit of stingy, Lord. Yeah. All of it made get out back to send the Lord. <laughs> we ask for this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I'm kidding. I'm just playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. But God hears these prayers. Praise the Lord. So we'll have a circulation of baskets. And of course, uh, the banking details are displayed on the screen. And uh, for those who need envelopes, you can just raise your hand. Hugo, you can play something nice, like beautiful. Amen. My God. No, don't worry. It doesn't mean the same one won't be powerful. Amen. Yeah, like, hey, no.
Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Pray and multiply the seed that was sown. Father, we give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, Bangwele, we're just going to go into the word. Um, yesterday, uh, we've been on uh, two weeks of, of conferencing. So yesterday, just felt somehow fatigued and we had Pastor Easy for our marriage boot camp. Did anyone do marriage boot camp? Wow, wow. <laughs> wow, guys. You guys are going to find anyone I attend. You guys look like the married type. Amen. We speak drama at your gate. Amen. Yeah, yeah. There'll be drama. Uncles not wanting to talk unless they're given something. People being told to get off their trees and all of that. That's your portion. Amen. So we're an amazing time, but yeah, fatigue uh, finally kicked in. And it's just such a blessing that we have big brothers in the Lord uh, who really can just assist us in such times. One of the finest expositors of the, of the Word of God is with us today. Um, we are currently on a series about Jesus is. Somebody say Jesus is. I think in a time that we live in today, it's, it's vital for us not only just to talk around the subject of faith, but the object of, of our faith. Because increasingly, terms are intersecting. People are manifesting, right? And also, we talk a lot about the manifestations of the sons of God. So you don't know, actually, what exactly they're talking about. So we want to make sure that your, your faith, you know, is undergirded under a proper foundation that is Jesus Christ, the capstone. Praise the Lord. So I've asked Pastor Easy to come and speak to us about Christ, our righteousness. Praise the Lord. Christ, our righteousness. Pastor Easy is married to Pastor Nana, and they're blessed with two kids. Uh, together they pastor Shapers Church. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please stand up on our feet and appreciate and welcome the gift that is Pastor Easy. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. It's good to be here. You may be seated in the presence of God. I uh, want to first of all acknowledge and appreciate um, the apostle of the house, the pastor, uh, Pastor Martin, and the incredible ministry that he's doing here. Let's give God praise for the men of God. Amen. And then, of course, we've got great gifts in the house. Pastor Colin um, is a, one of the greatest worshipers in our time, greatest leaders, greatest pastors. Uh, when we were starting out years ago, he actually helped us start our first worship team. Um, unfortunately, they're not with us today. <laughs> worship teams go through many deaths and resurrections. So they passed away years ago. But uh, it's good to still see uh, such an amazing gift from years ago. His excellence has, he's just, he, he was good then as now. He's just maintained consistency over the years. For years, for years he's been good. And then uh, Pastor Taki, of course, uh, Pastor Lungi introduced me to him years ago in the bush in Zanin. And um, he still got that raw anointing and that power, you know. Some anointings are not developed in the city. <laughs> Some anointings are developed in the bush. Amen. Eating sushi at four ways won't. <laughs> Got to eat pap. Some anointings require pap. And then uh, Dr. Maleluke, thank you so much for being with us here. Um, I had no idea that we're going to have so many great uh, gifts. They were traveling with uh, one of our pastors. She's the pastor of prayer, Pastor Mpo. She handles uh, intercession, so she's praying for us tonight. And then we've got some worship leaders and a cousin of the house, Precious. Um, you know, she's a great gift, great gift. And then I've probably got some people in the crowd. Uh, may God bless you. And because this service is called The Plug, um, the Holy Spirit um, gave me an instruction. Uh, who was serving last night um, during the plug and you are a size nine, a male? Can I have someone who was serving last night, uh, a male size nine? Okay. 
They're just pastors, sorry. <laughs> okay, maybe if, maybe someone else who's a size nine will receive the. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> you know, enjoy those Jordan nines, amen. It's the plug. We must plug each other. Amen. It's a service where you plug. Sometimes you give someone a car, sometimes a house, sometimes a Philip Patek. Amen. It's the plug service. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Turn with me to First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse 17. And it says, And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to to each one's work. Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb without blemish, without spot. Heavenly Father, help us today to deliver this word. We pray, Father, for a manifestation of the glory of God. We pray, Heavenly Father, let the gospel shine. Let Christ shine. Let Christ be revealed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Uh, my Bible talk, um, I always like to start with a Bible talk, just something theological to set up something that's coming. It's called the holiness of God. There's some definitions of the holiness of God. The first is on, from one of my favorite um, scholars, Grudem. He says, God's holiness encapsulates moral purity and moral excellence, which means that God is separated from sin and devoted to seeking his own honor. One of God's goals in the earth is to seek his own honor. Lind says, the holiness of God refers to the absolute moral purity of God and the absolute moral distance between God and human creatures. There's a distance between God and man. It's called the holiness of God. Gerard defines holiness as the separateness of God, not only from the created order, but also from sin. God cannot sin. God cannot do anything evil. Sproul says the primary meaning of holy is separate. It comes from an ancient word which means cut out which means that the accurate way to describe the holiness of God is he's a cut above everything he's created. Another scholar says the holiness of God refers to his moral purity. My definition of the holiness of God is the holiness of God is his transcendent perfection, which renders everything he is, thinks, says, or does infinitely perfect. God makes no mistakes. He's infinitely perfect. And it's the inherent infinite excellence of his being that sets him apart from sin. Because sin is a lack of excellence. Anything evil, any imperfection. And that's what elevates him above everything he's created. His holiness is infinitely beyond Human and angelic comprehension. The angels in the throne room of God have to cover their eyes. They are sinless. But even their sinlessness is not on the level of God's holiness. They will die if they look into the holiness of God. Because God's holiness is even above the seraphims and cherubims who are sinless beings. His holiness is glorious. It's majestic. It's inspiring. It's beautiful. It's wonderful, and it also creates dread and fear. That's why Isaiah said, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. The holiness of God is beautiful and scary. That's why when the presence of God really hits a place, you get scared. Holiness belongs to God alone. Only he has the power to make other beings or places holy. Are you hearing me here? The devil and the unsaved can be wise. They can be creative. They can be rich. They can be powerful. The unsaved can be rich. They can be powerful. They can be excellent. But there's one thing they can never be. They can never be holy. They can be moral, 
but they can never be holy. Because holiness belongs to God and he communicates it to beings and places of his choice. So when he calls us to be holy, we must know that we're being called into something we cannot achieve with human effort. It is God who has to reach out from heaven and make you holy when he touches your heart. Amen. Last year, there were some frightening um, reports which I saw online. Uh, there were two stabbing incidents that were caught on camera. The first one was a female student who was stabbed by a boyfriend in broad daylight. And the second was a man who works uh, for Sibanye Stillwater. He was stabbed by a workmate who opened up his belly and brought out um, his intestines live on camera on Twitter. And of course, there was that other scary video of AKA being shot. And um, why did those things happen? What causes such evil? Uh, those things are caused by two things, original sin and the powers of darkness. When the sin nature of man converges with demonic influence, evil occurs. And if there's anything South Africa needs more than ever right now, it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the kind of violence and crime we are seeing today, we need the gospel of Jesus Christ to help us save humanity and to bring down crime. We thank God for all the political manifestos. We thank God for all the stadiums full and unfull. But what's going to change this country is not a full stadium. It's the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let us go to the first section of our pericope, which is verse 17. <laughs> and uh, it's verse 17. It's um, Holy Father, Holy Judge. Verse 17 is Peter's call for holiness, which is in verse 16 in view. When Peter started, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. It is important to know that he's actually quoting Leviticus 11, 44 to 45. As a modern day Christian, you have to be fluent in Leviticanese in order to be an effective worshiper. Because you're going to see the power of the sacrifices and how the presence of God is something valuable. It's not something we play with. The presence of God, when his holiness comes, it has to create a level of awe and wonder in our hearts. In Leviticus 11, 44 to 45, it says, I am your Lord. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves around the ground. Any creature that moves in Santon, any creature that moves at the office, any creature that moves on TikTok, any creature that moves in your life, don't make yourself unholy. I am the Lord who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy. Why? Because I am holy. So Peter is reminding the audience that though we are in the New Testament church, saved by grace through Jesus Christ, there is still a mandate from the Old Testament that still applies in the New Testament. It hasn't changed. And which is for us as believers to live holy lives. Because holiness is not a social construct. It's not a creation of the patriarchy. It's not a creation of white supremacy to police women's bodies. It's not dependent on culture. Holiness is an intricate part of who God is. And if there is one major aspect of himself, which he wants us as people created as the imago Dei or the image of God to reflect and image, it is his holiness. So when we come to God in prayer and in his word or in a worship service, if there is one major thing he wants us to receive in a worship service, it is his holiness. Johnson says, what God is first and foremost is holy. The first thing about God is holy. We love to say God is love, but the angels don't say love, love, love. They say holy, holy, holy. Are you hearing me here? And it's important for us as modern day believers in Johannesburg to understand the holiness of God. So that we know exactly what we are called to reflect in this beautiful city. 
Packer said, the word holy as it relates to God is what sets him apart from every other created being. The holiness of God is the very godness of God. What makes God God is the fact that he is holy. And uh, let me repeat my definition of the holiness of God. God's holiness is his transcendent perfection. It means it's a perfection we'll never comprehend or understand. Which renders everything he thinks, says, does, or allow perfect. Even the bad things which happen in your life, if God allows them, he is holy. It's the perfect outcome for your life in that season. So when you're getting mad at him, you are claiming that you are holier than God. That I'm not in the perfect, you are in the perfect job for this season. You're in the perfect house for this season. The holiness of God in every season, whatever he allows is the perfect outcome to bring out the ultimate good for your life in that season. He is perfect. So getting mad at God is actually the height of carnal stupidity. We have no grounds to be mad at transcendent perfection. We have no grounds to be mad at God when we're going through difficult things. We have to understand that he is holy. So words like sin, he can't sin. He can't lie. Even words like fail. I know sometimes in worship songs like this, he can't fail. You know, failure, it's like saying God can't lie. Failure is something you can't even associate with him. He's perfect. He cannot even fail. So when Paul tells us in Philippians that he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion until the day of Christ, he's assuring you that the work of salvation that has become, begun in your life with justification, will continue with sanctification unto glorification. God will not fail in his salvific work in your life. You've been saved by grace in the past. You are being saved right now. And God has made a promise that he will save you in the end. God will not fail in his mission to get yourself to heaven. You cannot get yourself to heaven. And you're not called to get yourself to heaven. God has put that burden on himself. And it is his job. He doesn't save you and leave you to figure out how to get to heaven. If, if getting to heaven was 99% God's job and 1% yours, you wouldn't get there. It's 100% his job. He who began a good work is faithful to complete it. He will get you there. All you have to do is trust him. He will get you there. He is holy and Peter is reiterating to us the gospel call that God calls us to be holy like he is holy. Christianity at its core is a life of holiness. The challenge becomes when you are in a modern liberal city like Johannesburg where sin is normalized and glorified and holiness is despised. In our city, Johannesburg, holiness can seem impossible and even a burden that's so heavy that you cannot carry it. And legalism will always make holiness a burden that is too heavy for anyone to carry. Because legalism puts the, puts the burden of holiness in your life. In your strength, holiness is impossible. In your own strength, you will never be holy. We can preach be holy and you're like, in the service... I give myself away. I make up my mind. I'm deleting every number. I'm moving out of that house. I'm cutting off this toxic relationship. Straight from church, you pass by McDonald's, order for that person and find yourself with them. Are you hearing me here? Oh, Jesus. The greatest mistake you can make is try to be holy with human strength. It's impossible for a human being to be holy in their own strength. Are you hearing me here? Holiness requires the grace of God. The supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot resist Delilah in our own strength. Are you hearing me here? Some of you see Joseph running away from Potiphar. 
and say, I can do it. Some of you who pursue Potif <laughs> are hearing me here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. So what we have in the modern day church is a gospel that justifies you're forgiven, but it doesn't sanctify. It declares you've been forgiven, but it doesn't declare that by the power of the Holy Spirit who is now dwelling inside of you, you now have supernatural empowerment to make you holy. And many of us in a modern city like Johannesburg, we view grace as I am saved. And the grace of God means I have a multi-entry visa to sin as much as I want. Because living holy is Old Testament. It's under the law. God knows my heart. God knows my heart has created many secret children. But Peter comes in like a wrecking ball and breaks that lie and says, For it is written, be holy because I am holy. We are not justified by grace only. We are sanctified by grace too. Your problem is you have faith to be forgiven, but you don't have faith to be made holy. Some of you have faith to be billionaires, but I don't have faith to break that addiction. Some of you have faith to be entrepreneurs, but you don't have faith to be a faithful husband. Some of you have faith to call things that are not as though they are, but you don't have faith for zip management. Oh, Shambara Basanda. The same faith to go to nations is the same faith to not wind up in illegal bedrooms. What is the secret sin you're struggling with? This is the service where you have to let that sin know that this stops now. I'm done. I'm walking free. So in verse 17, when Peter says, since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, he brings us out and he shows us God's nature and character to bear. That God as our father and God as our judge. And both of these pictures are very important to understand the gospel because God is a father and a judge. And because many times we struggle to reconcile the holiness of God and the love of God. There's some people who just say, God is love, God is love, God is love, alone. And then some people who say, God is holy, um, live right, you got to do what is right. But God is both. He is father and judge. He is holy and he is loving. And how can God be loving at the same time an angry judge? How can he be a good father and a just judge at the same time? And these two aspects of God can seem contradictory, but they are facets of God's nature that coexist within himself harmoniously. His love and his justice ensure that there will be accountability in the end of time. So the question is, how can God love sinners and judge their sin without violating his own righteousness? That is answered by the cross. The cross is the place where we see God the Father and his sinless son, Jesus. And he now judges his son, not based on his deeds, for he was sinless, but based on ours. It's on the cross where we see the depth of the love of God and the justice of God underpinned by the holiness of God in one place at the same time. In that God as a holy father, he has to be a loving father, but his love is not like human love. His love is holy love. And even as a judge, his judge is not like human judgment. His judge is holy. His judgment is infinitely perfect. And when he sent his son, his son stood in our place. And on the cross, why did Jesus die? He had to die in our place as a substitute to receive the wrath of God we deserved 
so that we can receive the grace of God we don't deserve. He drank the cup of God's wrath in its entirety, didn't leave a drop, and now he passes a cup of grace to each and every one of us. Are you hearing me here? Say, God is good. good. Tristan Thompson, an NBA player who fathered a child with a reality TV star, Chloe Kumalo, was... He'd be dead by now. He was in a love relationship with her. He was in love with Khloe Kardashian, and he just kept, he kept cheating on her and fathering children with many other women. And he said, I've got the anointing of Abraham. I have many sons. So, <laughs> so recently he said, every time I cheated on Khloe, I felt disgusted the next day. Why did he say that? Because sin promises and provides pleasure up front. It takes you high for a moment, but brings you crashing down into deep dissatisfaction. Sin offers temporary pleasure, but it always provides pain, dissatisfaction in the human soul. Sin will never satisfy you. You can sleep with a hundred billion women. You will never be satisfied. Are you hearing me here? Because sin will never satisfy you. Holiness offers satisfaction and fulfillment for the human soul. In Jeremiah, there's a verse I love, man, where God is describing the human condition. He's the fountain of living water. And he says, when you sin, you turn away from the fountain of living water and start pursuing broken and poisoned wells. Every time we disobey God, we're turning to something that is lesser than the pleasure and satisfaction that is found in faithfulness. Are you hearing me here? There is no pornography which can satisfy you more than your wife. There is no side dish that can satisfy you more than living in order with your wife and children. Holiness satisfies the human soul, but sin will always destroy your human soul. Aren't you tired of sinning and feeling dissatisfied after sin? It's time to turn to God and receive the true sat satisfaction that comes from holiness. Holiness satisfies your soul. Holiness brings peace. Holiness keeps your budget safe. Holiness keeps peace in the home. Holiness will keep you away from diseases. Holiness will keep you away from emotional confusion. If you ask psychological professionals, they'll tell you that a lot of these um, psychological institutions are full of women whose hearts were broken by bad relationships. Seeking pleasure will cost you your life. So when Peter says you are a foreigner in life, what he's saying is everything here is temporary. Whatever sin, whatever this world is offering is temporary. This is not your home. You're passing by. You're going to something eternal. There's nothing this world can offer that can match what God can give you. And when you get a revelation of the holiness of God, it creates a strong desire in your heart to please God through how you live. And you start to see worship not just as songs I sing, but how I live my life. How I live my life is a form of worship. So when temptations come, you find yourself resisting as a form of worship. I want to please you, God. The reason why I don't want to do this is I want to please you. I'm not going to do this sin, not because I'm afraid of hell, but because I'm living to please God. Let my life be a sacrifice. Let how I live be a living sacrifice. I'm going to say no to sin as an act of worship. This is the year to worship God with how you live. This is the year to worship God through how you live your life. Are you hearing me here? Let's go to section 2, verse 18. For you know that it's not with perishable things such as silver or gold, 
that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. So what is Peter talking about here? So Peter gives us another beautiful reason to pursue holiness in that he shows us a concept, a powerful concept called redemption. Say redemption. In this original audience, the, the picture of redemption is a marketplace picture. It's a term that relates to slavery. And verse 18 is a setup and 19 is the punchline. In verse 18, he says, you are not redeemed by perishable things like silver and gold from empty way of your ancestors. Then in 19, he says, you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So this is a marketplace term. So let's look at redemption first. So in the ancient Roman uh, audience of this text, they understood redemption involved, it, was, it involved slavery. A slave being bought out of slavery was considered redeemed. In that time, you could become a slave for even having debt. You would work as a slave to pay the debt. They don't repossess the car. <laughs> they make you a slave. Are you hearing me here? And sometimes the debt was so big that they'll take you, your wife, and your children, and your children's children, and you'd work until the debt is paid. And for three generations, slaves, because our grandfather couldn't walk past that BMW X7. And this is a picture of Adam, how he got all humanity in debt. In Genesis 3, he got the entire mankind in a debt we couldn't pay. And when Jesus comes on the cross, he comes to pay the debt for all our sin. And now through faith in Jesus, we are redeemed. Are you hearing me here? Say redemption. And you've got to understand the contrast between redemption and justification. Justification, when you think of justification, you think of a courtroom. Because justification is a forensic legal term where sinners are declared righteous by God on the day of salvation. He says you are not guilty. You know that verse, there is no condemnation. That's connected to, it's a legal term. That you were guilty and now he says you're not guilty. So it's important to see the difference between redemption and justification. When you think of redemption, think of slavery. And because it shows you the ugly truth of sin. Oof. Whenever we say the word redemption, the picture which must pop up in our minds is what sin truly is. Sin is slavery. Oh my goodness. So whenever we say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, the mind you must think of is of a slave in chains, in fetters of iron being set free. Because sin is slavery. How many of you have chains tonight? Something owns you. Something you can't get over. Something you started doing 15 years ago. It's been 15 years and that chain isn't broken. But I've come to tell you that you have been redeemed. You have been set free. You don't have to go back. So when you hear justification, think of a courtroom. When you hear redemption, think of slavery. Think of chains. Think of whips. Think of no human rights, no freedom, and painful abuse. And slavery in all its historic iterations was a nightmarish experience because it dehumanized human beings. Sin came in to dehumanize us. It comes to say, I don't recognize the image of God in you. You belong to me. You will never be holy like your father is holy. You are my slave for life. And there are so many Christians who've given up. And are saying it's always going to be like this. I'll never be free. Adam's disobedience incurred a debt for us. And we needed a redeemer to come in. And whenever we put our faith in him, we break free. He says, you've been redeemed from that empty way of life, handed to you from your ancestors. And in light of this Jewish audience, the Old Testament, they always understood that when you are getting traditions from the past, they can bind you down forever. But it's through Jesus Christ that we get true transformation. 
And the challenge we have as the modern day church is that we are not aware of the power that we have in the Holy Spirit. You don't have to remain bound. You just have to get up and receive your freedom. Say, I am free. And then in verse 19, he says, the precious blood of the lamb. And this is the final section of this text and we close. Now, the blood underscores the price of our redemption. Peter tells us we've been redeemed by the precious blood of the lamb. And this is a picture from Passover. We're redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus, which is greater than perishable things. So what that means is when you are set free, you are set free eternally. When you redeemed a slave, they would receive a certificate which says no more on the market. So when people would come and say, come back to the market, they just show the certificate and say, I am off the market. And some of you need to tell the devil, I am off the market. Show them your certificate that there is no going back. This is a new life. I have been redeemed. I have been set free. I have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So to fully appreciate redemption, you got to appreciate atonement. You will not appreciate the good news of the gospel without understanding atonement. Why? Because atonement means making amends. When you do something bad, amends needs to be made. So when Adam sinned, there had to be an amendment made. Something had to be done to pay the debt of what he had done against the infinite perfection of God who seeks his honor. God values his, his standards so much that he sent his son to die to preserve his standards. Are you hearing me here? And to provide a way of escape for us who are weak and unable to maintain the standards of God. And it is through Jesus Christ that we are delivered and set free. Imagine you work at MTN and you steal a hundred million rand and you're in court and you blew it. <laughs> you are, you were, they saw you on the documentary. I blew it. And that's how they took the notes, the SIU, and they said, oh, this person stole money. And now you're in court. And they say, we can't forgive you unless you pay that debt. So whenever you're thinking of atonement, there is the injured party. Let's say the CEO of MTN. And then you are the offender. You have to pay back. In the natural order, you have to pay back the injured party. But what God did as the injured party is not receive payment, but he paid the debt. Are you hearing me here? He was the injured party who deserved to see you punished. But instead of punishing you, he provided a way of redemption in Jesus Christ. What a good God we serve. The precious blood of Jesus redeemed us it paid the debt of our sins are you hearing me here he paid the debt and sometimes when we tell people you are saved jesus died for you we're selling our salvation cheap because imagine you're watching the news you're watching e-news and you watch a, a video of some crazy white guy in cape town and you hear on the news that he died and he left a note for you He said, I love you. You were like, this person is crazy. Why did he die? Now imagine you're in a courtroom and you were speeding and you killed a man's wife and children and you deserve to go to jail. And the judge says, sentence them to death. And then the injured party says, don't kill them. Take me instead. Forgive them. But But watch it now. Justification is not only forgiveness. There's also a transfer. The righteousness of Jesus is transferred. So he not only takes you off the hook, but he changes your status. So as he's going to jail to die in your place, he says, when I die, let them inherit everything I own. 
Not only that, give them my name. Not only that, everyone in my family, treat him the way you would treat me. Let me receive. They are a young person. They are too young. My wife and children already die. Let me die in their place and change their status. That's the power of what Jesus has done in your life. When you deserve to die. When you said, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. He not only said you're forgiven, he gave you his righteousness. Not only that, he gave you his spirit. Not only that, he adopted you as a son. Not only that, he brought you in union. Not only that, he broke every curse. Every generational curse was broken on the day of salvation. Cursed is he who hung on the tree. So he broke every curse and said, here's the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Isaac, the blessing of Jacob. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. In increase, I will increase you. Are you hearing me here? And all he is saying is, depend on me. Put your faith in me. You cannot live the Christian life in your own strength. The gospel is not a try harder gospel. It's a depend more gospel. God is glorified in our dependence. The more we depend on him, the more he is glorified. Depend on him for your career. Depend on him for your business. Depend on him for wisdom. Depend on him for peace. There is a grace for every situation in your life. But until you surrender and say, Father, I'm going to depend on you. And I'm going to trust you. Because I was bought with precious blood. I was redeemed. I'm no longer on the market. After this service, you're no longer on the market. You're going to walk in a level of holiness where they shall call you Mamruti at the office. Are you hearing me here? At every office, there's the Smokers Association. When you walk in the place, sorry, my name Ruti. Are you hearing me here? You're going to walk in a level of peace and purity that is going to shock your family. You're going to walk in a level of integrity that will shock every ex in your life. All of those who say she's got a body count, you say, I've been redeemed. It's back to square zero. And now I'm going through sanctification. I'm no longer the same. You're not only forgiven, you're also being sanctified. You have the power of the Holy Spirit, the same power which rose Jesus from the dead. You know, the most painful thing Jesus experienced on the cross was not the nails. When Jesus was shaking in the garden of Gethsemane, he wasn't afraid of whips and all of that. That didn't bother him. The physical pain didn't bother him. It's the spiritual agony of the divine abandonment when God would have to withdraw his goodness. Because anything that God steps away from come crumbles. You know when they say that Pharaoh's heart was hardened, it was simply God stepping back and allowing him to be himself. Because it took God's grace. Because God, the heart of the king is in God's hand. Pharaoh was not a good person. The hardening was just God stepping back and saying, I give you up. Show them who you really are. Are you hearing me here? Because God restrains evil. There are so many nuclear weapons in the earth today to blow us all away. But the heart of Putin is in God's hand. The heart of Crazy Joe is in his hands. The heart of Kim jong Un is in his hand. The heart of Pakistan, India, all the nuclear weapons, none of them are going to fly without his permission. Are you hearing me here? And you know, one of the graces of God is when you sin, he actually shields you from how, how bad you've messed up. 
part of his grace is to protect your conscience from how bad it really is. He is so loving, hallelujah, that he doesn't make you even feel the level of pain and anguish you're supposed to feel. He, he protects you from the spiritual damage you've done in the spirit through your carnal stupidity. He protects you and shields you from that because he's such a good God who's infinitely perfect. Let's stand. He's infinitely perfect. He's infinitely good. He's infinitely gracious. He's infinitely merciful. I'll close with this. For those in ministry who always feel like I'm not worthy to be in ministry, you are 100% correct. No one in the world ministers who is worthy. It's all by God's grace. None of us are good enough to do this job. None of us are, will ever be holy enough to do this job. It's all by God's grace. Our best goodness is still filthy rags. That's why we have to depend on his righteousness, on his grace to see us through. Are you hearing me here? Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight we release divine grace for sanctification. Help us to be holy like you're holy, Father. We're tired of secret sin. We're tired of falling for the same sins for years. Help us, Lord. You know we can't overcome it in our own strength. Give us the grace to overcome. Give us the supernatural empowerment to walk according to your word. We thank you that we are no longer slaves. We are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus cleanse our consciences. May you soften our hearts. May you help us to see your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, and to walk on the path of righteousness in our families, in our businesses, in our speech, in our thoughts, even in our hearts. Give us pure desires, Father. Help us to overcome the sickness which Adam has given us. By your stripes we are healed. You took all our grief. You took all our problems on the cross. And let us walk, Father, adorn us in your grace. Let us walk in a robe of righteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Come on, while we're still standing, let's just appreciate the man of God. What a word. What a word. There's a question that begs asking. There's a question that begs asking. And that is, who is this message for? It's, it's one thing really for us to celebrate, and, but the, the issue is, is this for you? Is this for you? Who is redeemed? Who, whom did Jesus die for? There's a word, there's a New Testament word, there's a New Testament word, an all-inclusive word which might per adventure mean that you are included in this message. And that is whomsoever. Whomsoever. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whomsoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We could be in this atmosphere, all of us praising God, enjoying ourselves, but it might be that you don't have a relationship with God through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In this moment, I just want all of us to just close our eyes. I sense in my heart there's someone who's here who needs to respond to this word, who needs to respond, who needs to have a qualitative response to the preaching of God's word. 
Listen here. God does not know of any other way for you to be saved except through the preaching of his word. This is your opportunity. You are part of the whomsoever shall believe. So if you are here today and you're saying, Pastor Mario, I want to accept this Jesus Christ that Pastor Easy was talking about. I'm going to need you to just quickly raise up your hand. If you are here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just quickly raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. Just quickly raise up your hand. If you're in this place and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just quickly raise your hand. The second call I'm going to make is for those who say, Pastor Mario, I've given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, but I've fallen astray. Today, I want to make a response and rededicate my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've made the initial decision, but today you want to make your way back, you can also raise your hand. We're just going to pray for you. You've made the decision. I'm seeing a hand here. Just quickly come to the front, guys. Quickly come to the front. For those who raise their hand, come on, don't be scared. Come through, my brother, come through. Come to the front. Praise the Lord, yeah. Praise the Lord, yeah. Lomu songa. Come on, come on, let's be excited. What a beautiful one. Praise the Lord. Come on. just stretch out our hands father god we thank you for these your children who had responded to the call but lord just because of the journey life has happened but today oh god they are making a recommitment to follow your oh god to follow your word Father God, your word says you are able to keep us from falling. And Father, we are so grateful. We are so grateful that even when we fall from grace, we fall into grace. So Father God, we thank you that even as we've had the beautiful news, the good news, we pray that Lord, their response will be one which will be sustained by your grace. Father, we are so grateful for the work that you're doing in their lives and your grace. We thank you that, Lord, you've restored them. And, Father, we thank you that you'll keep them till the end. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen and amen. Can we thank God for this, guys? Praise the Lord. Let's do this. We are, we are kick-starting our discipleship program. It's called eGrowth. And it's really just getting you plugged in to, to the basics of the gospel. I, I would like all of us who are here, even though some of the stuff you've heard, it, it doesn't kill to repeat it again. So, come on. Did I say come on? Come on. So, we we'll just follow this gentleman. You're going to take down their names, email addresses, and all of that. We're going to call you guys into a WhatsApp group. Please don't leave the group. Amen. We want to disciple you. We want to walk with you on this journey. Can we just appreciate these beautiful souls? You can follow this gentleman. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when we've come to the end of our service, um, I don't know how we're going to deal with, um, we've got quite a lot of first-time visitors today, right? 
Um, what are we going to do? Where can we meet for first time visitors? That side. We're good. Awesome. So our first time visitors, can you please just pick up your belongings and make your way to the foyer as well? Let's clap hands for our first time visitors as they make their way to the foyer. Just quickly pick up your belongings. We want to give you some of hospitality. Amen. You can, sorry, yeah, sorry. Praise the Lord. We can stand up on our feet. How many of us appreciated and loved Pastor? Oh, I, I, I didn't know. But take it, man of God. Pastor Takido. Amen. You never know, Murut. You never know, hey? Yeah, but thank you so much for just being a vessel uh, of honor. You, you are a great blessing. I'm, I'm such a fan, and today we're so blessed. Can we appreciate him one more time? <laughs> Jesus fed 5,000 people. What's 5,000 there by Brakpan Manuel? Let's buy some tickets. Okay, let's do this. I, I want to at least say okay, 10 tickets at least. Show of hands. Who's buying? I'm seeing two. There's two tickets here. Three, four, five. Oh, is, is it two when you do this? Okay. There's someone there. Praise the Lord. It's not just for one person. Shabaya. I see you buying two as well. So two, 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 six, four, two. Can someone keep a count? You know, I want you to know, Pastor Taki, that at least like around 20, they came from EGC. Amen. Yeah. Let, let, let's just, let's keep it up. Let's lift it up. Just lift it up. These two, not in Obu Chief, Sinyan. Just lift it up. Um, box you on it, right? The count. There's two, that's also that side. Yeah. There we go. Two neck. Okay, I see you. Hey! Wow. Where are we sitting, Pax? How many? 30? 23. Guys, let's make it 30, man. Just seven more. Oh, there's five more there. Did you count? It's five. Four. Okay, four. So 23 plus four, that's 27. Who's getting... Oh, I didn't count my wife, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah. Awesome. So we've hit the 30, right? That's from... We are there, Marut. Sisong, Ola. Come on. Praise the Lord. Manuela, please follow us on, on TikTok, X, what else? Instagram, like our page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. To our YouTube uh, subscribers, we hope that you gave. Praise the Lord, and we love you. Let us pray. We are so grateful that we are your own. We are redeemed of the Lord. Father, we give you praise and honor. Even as we get out of here, Lord, may we have a great week. May this be a week void of we need to talk. Oh, Lord. Private calls. Debt collectors and telemarketers, one side. This week we are receiving, sorry for taking long, for getting back to you. We bind every we regret to inform you in the name of Jesus. That DM you sent, you've been having monologues in someone's DM. The monologue stops this week. We pray for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. What a prayer.